Hey everyone. So um, we'll take a look at this issue that I've been seeing on uh, some of the discords, people talking about this VRAM overflow issue in DCS. Um, I've been looking at it for a couple of days. Uh, I think I know what the problem is and at least a fix that works for me on my machine. Um, when the problem occurs now, I don't really have this problem very often because I have 24 gigs of VRAM and this problem seems to happen for people who have a lot less. But nonetheless, I'm able to reproduce the problem um, and then through some research, try to figure out what I think is really going on. But anyway, the problem is uh, if you have a mission uh, and it uses a bunch of assets and those assets require a bunch of VRAM, you will ultimately run out of VRAM. And what happens is your system is going to then move things from RAM to VRAM as necessary. And if it's not needed for, you know, whatever you're drawing on the screen, it'll move it out of VRAM into RAM. And if your RAM overflows, then it goes to your swap space on disk and probably unloads at some point if uh, it's not used at all. Now, uh, this is a mission I made. It allows me to replicate the issue by what I did is I added almost every asset on the NATO side that I could find. Um, they all have different textures. Uh, at the end of the runway, I added a bunch of F-16s, which I have the most textures for. And each one of those has a separate texture that, so that that way I'm loading as much stuff in memory as possible. Um, you can see here just at the start of the mission, I'm already using 15, almost 16 gigs of RAM uh, in my um, in my memory, in my VRAM here. And uh, if we run the mission, what I'll do is I'll run down the runway with the camera and you'll watch this number grow. And when the problem ultimately happens and it's swapping stuff out of RAM to, uh, sorry, out of VRAM to RAM and back and forth to try to draw what's on the screen, you'll notice that the textures will be very low resolution because they'll be using a low MIP level, which is um, a smaller version of the texture so that it can render something. They're usually used uh, at distance, but what'll happen is it'll load the lowest resolution and then it'll grow it. And so you'll see stuff, um, I'm sure you guys have seen this in games where you have something right in front of you has a low resolution texture being drawn and then it'll get better and better and better and better and then finally it looks great. Uh, the most noticeable is on the F-15 here or the, the F-15E or the um, uh, F-14 here. So I'll go ahead and run this so you guys can see. Uh, you can take a look at the VRAM in the top left. It's at 16 right now. Uh, and as we go, it'll grow and you'll see, start seeing the issue. Also, what'll happen is the game will start freezing like crazy. So here we go. So we switch over to uh, this camera and I just literally run through them really fast. And the reason is, is the closest I get, the more VRAM is getting used, loading more text. You can see here we're at 23 gigs. I turn around, everything's kind of freezing. And as I come down the runway here, it unloaded a few. It's going back up now all the way back up and if we stop at the f-15 you can see it was really low resolution there for a second uh, you can see our frame time in the top left that graph is going crazy let me turn down the volume a little bit here and i'm completely frozen now because it's loading and unloading stuff i i can't even i'm moving the mouse like crazy you can see it's barely moving we're getting a couple frames per second i'll back up off the ground here there we go we recovered that's kind of the issue you can see my frame time is going nuts if we run through these guys again, you can see the pausing there. It's unloading stuff and loading new stuff in. I turn, it freezes again. It's completely frozen. So this is kind of the symptom people are getting. I think for most people, when it happens, this is a very forced scenario. Uh, when it happens to them, they're seeing um, just a, a pure frame drop. You see the F-15 there? It's at a low resolution and then it popped back in. Um, so that's everything loading with multi-threading in the background and then the render thread has to do some of that work so it's catching up you see my frames are just tanking now um you know if i sit here and it's all loaded in then it's totally fine so we know it's not you know the mission and the complexity of the mission all it is is a bunch of aircraft starting up everything's fine here it's when i start running through and it has to load assets so that's kind of the issue so uh what i found is that if you run single threaded this problem doesn't really occur and let's take a look at that okay so we've loaded up the single threaded version 
And the first thing you'll notice is up here, we have 23 gigs of basically 24 gigs of VRAM already in use. Uh, the single threaded stuff doesn't seem to try to optimize memory. It just pumps everything up there. Um, and that's probably going to help us. <laughs> in fact, I know it does. You'll see why in a second. Um, but basically, uh, I think multi-threaded with no CPU affinity changes or anything, um, I think it started at 11 for me on this mission. Uh, I have to go back and look, but I think that's right. Um, and, and you can see here it's, it's, it's already full. So if we start this mission and we go ahead and move around now, I'm gonna have a lower frame rate. Cause again, this is, um, single threaded, but you can see like just sitting here, it's already at 24 gigs. I'm not doing anything special. Um, everything's spinning up. And if we go through here, my frame rate again is already dog shit, but, uh, I guess it's not terrible, but you can see there's no like hiccuping yet. Right. If I turn, there's one hiccup there little bit there but for the most part everything's fairly solid um we stop here that f-15 is already loaded in if i turn again we get a little bit of a hiccup we go back and forth but it stays solid at 24 gigs it's not going up and down not going up and down at all and i think that's because in single threaded the memory management code that they added for you know whatever they're doing in multi-threaded uh it doesn't exist and so it's not trying to load and unload stuff as they see fit is just kind of just kind of going it's already there it's just using it it's probably going from ram to vram to swap space and it's not actually unloading fully you can see here this is a much better experience there are a couple pauses it's fairly solid after that you know going up and down here i'm i'm not getting that huge issue where everything completely stopped remember i looked at the ground before i'm not getting that issue and I think that was because it was unloading a whole bunch of stuff because I was no longer looking at it. Um, you know, I, I get a pause when I turn completely around on each end of the runway here, but that's kind of it. You know, the pause right there. I come back down and it's solid. And you can look at my frame time, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit of a squiggle, but it's not as drastic as it was in multi-threading. You just get those pauses at the end of the runway, you know. We're, when we're going from nothing to something that that's when we get it right there it's the only time so anyway that's an interesting thing to uh note is that single threaded doesn't really have this issue this is definitely much more of a multi-threaded only issue or introduced in the multi-threaded version of dcs now there's one more thing i want to show you um so let's take a look at that okay so with dcs running i have a program called uh process lasso now i'm just going to use this to show you something you don't actually have to use this program you can it's easier if you do but i'm going to show you also how to you do exactly what i'm doing we in process lasso with dcs without using process lasso but we'll go over that in a second so i have process lasso here um there's a thing called cpu affinity it's it's what cpus your process is allowed to use okay and so if we go here and we say cpu affinity always select cpu affinity It'll show you here a checkbox for every core on my machine. I have 24 cores. Um, and so all 24 cores are checked. Now I did some testing around this. Now my running theory on this whole problem is that when ED implemented, um, multi-threading, they basically said, let's spin up a, a bunch of threads and we'll load resources, you know, with those threads and we'll pass them off to the render thread as, as they're loaded. Um, and I think that in theory, that's a good idea, uh, but it never works that way. Um, having developed a bunch of multi-threaded applications myself, uh, typically you do do that. You say, well, I have a bunch of threads, uh, I'm going to use them all and we'll see how fast this works. And then you scale back from there because it never works that way. Um, the reason is, is you have disk IO and IO operations between, um, your VRAM and your RAM, and then your RAM and your disk, your swap space, and then the disk itself that it's loading the data off of. And when you throw, uh, let's say they use half these threads. If you throw, you know, 12 threads to say, go load these resources off disk, the disk can only do so much. And the threads are going to be able to, uh, use individual or virtual CPUs 
and try to pull that data. But the disk, the disk now has to feed 12 different threads information. And, and, um, it's, it's a lot like making file copy operations from one drive to the next. If you're copying folder, 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 folder individually, instead of all at once, it slows everything down. I think that's what's happening in DCS is there's too much IO going on. Uh, and the threads have saturated the IO. And so to prove my point that I, or my theory, what I did was I went and disabled. In fact, let me just invert this. I disabled everything but four threads. Okay. Um, or maybe it was five. I think I started at five. Uh, so with five threads selected as the CPU affinity, DCS is only going to be able to use five of my CPUs. So let's go ahead and set this. I might have to reboot, um, DCS for that to take effect fully. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So here we are. I've loaded up this mission. My CPU affinity is set to five cores. The first thing you will notice or that I noticed is everything takes 10 times longer to load in. And that's because, uh, it, it has to wait for all this stuff. It's not preloading. So like in single threaded, it preloaded everything and then it loaded the mission. But in multi-threading, the way it works is they're fetching as needed, right? And so they can do and say, hey, our mission's loaded. All the information we have for it's loaded. We're just waiting on the graphic assets. Uh, let's load those asynchronously and we'll present the mission to the user. And that's why when you load in and multi-threading, typically your cockpit is still loading in. The textures are still loading in. Um, in this case, the world was still loading in. Um, and so that part does take longer because there are less resource loaders working because there are less threads given to do that. But once it's loaded in, this is what we see. We'll go ahead and run through this. If we go through each one of these here, we we'll go through these planes here, get a little stutter there, a little stutter there a little bit. We turn, didn't freeze, a little freeze there. We're at 23 gigs of RAM. Okay. But we're not seeing the freezing. If we stop up here, you can see these jets are still loading in and it takes a long time. It does take a long time for them to load in, but, but everything's solid now. It's, it's not completely frozen. So there's probably a queue saying I need to load this texture, load this texture, load this texture. There's probably a queue of 20 textures. It's loading the threads. Now there's only maybe three or four of them are going and fetching those textures one by one by one by one by one. So it's queued up instead of a bunch of threads trying to all load at the same time. Right? And so we don't have, there's that pause again, like we saw in single threaded, a little bit of a stutter here, but it's not as drastic as we saw when there were, you know, a bunch of threads, a little stuttering there. So I don't think this is like the perfect solution, but this definitely runs way better than it ran, um, for me before, right? That first test was terrible. There was so much pausing, so much stuttering. Um, I do need to do some more analysis to see what my frames are. Like, am I actually losing 10 frames, 20 frames? I'm at 60 right now. I get close to all these planes. It drops a lot. We dropped to like 40 there, but you can see here is way more solid than it was before. Um, I'm not really getting that VRAM overflow issue. You know, the Ram now is at 18. We go down this line, still 18, 18, 16. I think the reason it's not, you're not seeing the overflow as much is because these textures aren't loaded in, right? So you can see here as they load in, we're at 19, we're at 20, 21, 22. This one's still not loaded in 23. And there would be our VRAM overflow, right? But our frames are solid, a little bit of lag. But I think what's happening is not everything's getting stuffed into memory at the same time because the disk finally caught up to the IO uh, requests from, from each of those threads. There we go. That, that texture is finally in, but now it dropped, it dropped down to 13 and that's probably because it unloaded all these ones over here. So if I go down this line, you can see they're starting to pick back up again. It's an interesting issue. Um, and it's an interesting issue in programming in general is threading seems like a cure, but if it's not done properly and it's really hard to do properly. So this isn't a, uh, this really isn't like, uh, me trying to shit on ED thing. It is hard to do multi-threading applications properly. Um, 
it, it, it just, it seems like, Hey, I can, I can do all this work at once in parallel and it's going to be awesome, but it never works that way because there's IO operations that happen on disc. Um, there could be shared resources where one thread needs the resource from the other and it can't use it until the other threads done. There's all sorts of problems that can come up. Um, so yeah. So I think what you should do if you're having this issue is set your affinity, uh, either through process lasso or I'll show you how to um, set it through DCS every time you launch the app as well. Um, I think you should try that and, and, and let me know how it works. Let, let's get some uh, collective community data and testing going on. Um, you know, let's see. So let me uh, back up and I'll show you how to set the affinity. So you're going to want to have a shortcut to DCS. You're going to want to go to properties and where it says target at the top here on the outside of the quotation. You're going to want to type dash dash affinity equals, and then there's going to be a uh, multi-character hex number you're going to um, need to type here, uh, depending on how many CPUs. Uh, I'll throw that list up on the screen. But for me, if I want it to always run six cores, I would type 3F. If I wanted to do eight cores, it's FF. Um, 16 cores is FFFF. So, uh, I'll throw up the first few, um, actually I'll throw up a bunch on the screen and then you guys can figure out which one you want. I would suggest starting at four. So start at, uh, just F, see how it goes. If it works pretty well, bump it up by two. So six would be three F. And then if that works, go up to, uh, FF, which would be eight and do that until you start seeing a performance impact that you don't care for. And then maybe bring it down one core. Um, let me know. Try it out. See if it works for you. Um, you hit me up in Discord. We can discuss it. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that solves some of your guys' issue, at least as a workaround until um, something gets fixed on ED's end regarding this issue. Have a good one.